just kind of like step back for a second and try to see. We're trying to find the angle between the two vectors, right? Now, if we're trying to find the angle between these two vectors, if I look at this and I say, well, do I know what the cosine of pi over 4 is? Yeah, yeah like let's go and sketch the here, a little unit circle action. Here's pi over 4, that's square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2. Right? That's pi over, pi over 4. So I can replace cosine of pi over 4 with cosine of 2 over 2. I can replace the sine of pi over 4 with cosine of 2 over 2. So I can do 2 square root of 2 over 2 i plus 2 square root of 2 over 2 j. And then what happens? So I'm left with square root of 2 i plus square root of 2 j. Does everybody see that vector u? Yes? Wasn't that bad. Um, the next one is 3 pi over 2. Well, if I continue this kind of unit circle here, if this point is 1 comma 0, and this point is 0 comma 1, that means this point is negative 1 comma 0, and this point is 0 comma negative 1. So if halfway around a circle is pi, that means that's pi halves. So half of pi, 2 halves of pi, 3 halves of pi. So cosine of that is 0 plus sine of that is going to be negative 1, which is really negative j is your v, is my v vector. Okay. Now we need to make sure we know the angle between the two vectors, which is, goes in the formula of cosine of theta is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So we do have to find the dot product of these two. Now we can write them over here as our component form. So I'm just going to erase this here so I can do some work. So if I wanted to find the dot product, u dot v, I'm basically going to multiply my first two components, which would be square root of 2 times 0. And then I'm going to add that to the square root of 2 times negative 1. And that's just going to give me negative square root of 2 as my dot product. Does that make sense? No? Yes? Maybe? Yeah. Then I need to find the magnitude. So the magnitude of u is simply the square root of its first component squared plus the second component squared. Well, guys, square root of 2 squared plus square root of 2 squared is going to equal square root of 4. Square, square root of 2 squared is just 2. So look at, no, I'm not even using the calculator yet. Magnitude of v is basically going to be the square root of 0 squared plus negative 1 squared, which Hunter, when I do this, I get negative 1 squared is 1, square root of 1 is 1. So when I plug in my information, I have cosine of theta equals negative the square root of 2 divided by 2 times 1 is 2. Oh, negative square root of 2 over 2. I don't even need a calculator. Basically saying what angle, cosine of what angle gives me negative square root of 2 over 2. Well, 45 degrees gives me positive square root of 2 over 2. So I need a negative square root of 2 over 2. Uh, let's do in radians, which is, yes, that's correct. 3 pi over 4. But it also could be this one, right? Right? Wouldn't you guys agree with there? Why isn't 4 pi over 3 an answer, though? No, cosine would still be negative. Cosine's negative over here. Why is, why is 4 pi over 3 not an answer? Or, uh, sorry, 5 pi over 4 not an answer? If you plug in your calculator, you're only going to get one answer. Because what is restricted? The domain of the cosine function. Remember, cosine, inverse cosine, is restricted to the first and the second quadrant. So it's only, you can only give the answer that's in the second quadrant. This is an answer. That negative 5 pi over, five pi over 4 has, at cosine is negative. Is negative square root of 2 over 2. But um, it's not within its restriction. 
So the only answer is 3 pi over 4. OK? Ah, i got to give you guys your test. <laughs> All right, take everything off your desk. Um, you are allowed a scratch piece of paper. You are allowed a graphing calculator. You will need a highlighter as well.